Good morning, Good morning. and uh, thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Volani. Uh, it's a wet weekend in Lagos, southwest of the country where we're broadcasting for. It might not be the same with you, uh, where you are, but it's wet and um, indeed there have been some, you know how people will share videos, you know, all over, all over the place of um, floods and all of that. But let's come back home. Hope you had a great weekend until the rain set in this morning. Uh, let's look at the tax, the VAT. Uh, value added tax controversy that's ongoing the latest on it this morning it's it's been in the news for about the first four days or so and um to help me look at it uh mr mukta Mohammed, financial analyst and stock broker thanks as always for My pleasure, Uncle Yori. thank you very much sir and um mr uh olusha son uh ok yeah yeah ok yeah i should just not <laughs> m m mention every last uh, every last <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> good so morning good, Uncle good morning sir yeah. uh, he's a chartered uh, tax professional chartered accountant and public affairs analyst a pleasure to be here indeed mm -hmm. our pleasure and um if you know we also will be joining up with mr dr mabinuri another financial analyst uh, that might be by remote now let's let's kick off with this whole matter it's uh, first of all the, there has been a, a, a pronouncement from the court. Lawyers have been using the term declaratory uh, ruling uh, by the court that you states, states are in order. You know, go ahead and continue, uh, you know, to, to administer, collect, administer, and indeed spend that. Um, the FIRS has actually advised, we don't have a lawyer in place, but has actually advised that... Um, their public, the same public, we um, we seem to be having one or two little gizmos, you know, working out of turn. Um, that the public should ignore and continue, you know, uh, go back to the status quo. As I said, there's no lawyer, but we're not going to concern ourselves with those lawyerly details too much, unless those ones that you are sure. Uh, no lawyer will query when you stop talk about it. Give me your overview of this whole situation here, because the latest this morning is that the president will actually respect the court verdict on value-added tax, whatever that is. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Uncle Yori. The controversy surrounding this uh, VAT is uh, deep, and uh, we've seen diverse people rolling in emotions and sentiments as regard who and who, and uh, I, I add people saying this is the true test of a fiscal federalism well. if we should go by the verdict that we add. Uh, let it be a record also that uh, the FRS appealed this, and uh, you know, part of the problem I had while I was growing up is uh, the interpretation of some of this law. Remember the, when the enemy were having issues and not, they say status quo remains. At this point, FRS is saying stat status quo remains means we should go back to the old thing <laughs> of <laughs> FRS collected it. Uh, some lawyer came out and said, well, the status quo that the court is actually saying is the last pronouncement uh, that uh, got uh, the state the uh, opportunity to collect uh, this. But plus and minus, if you look critically into what VAT is all about, it's deep. And I always suggest that uh, we should not rush when we have this kind of pronouncement uh, by the courts. Uh, in everything that you do, there's always a transition period. Before now, the FIRS, <laughs> you need to know the number of years it took them to get it right, it even getting what they're getting now. 28 yeah. years. Yeah, exactly. 28 almost, years. Almost 30 almost years. 30 years. Mm. And if you give back to a child of 30 years, you know what you have, would have invested in that child. And all of a sudden, uh, you discover that that child is no longer yours. You mm. need to part away with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if the court is given that verdict, as we speak, by my own analysis, uh, we are not yet through it there yet. Because now there's going to be an appeal, and after a while, we we'll go to the Supreme Court before the final decision is taken. But do we put in mind an average business owner who are involved in this? Indeed. The uh, truth uh, of the matter is, when two elements like this states 
and the federal when they fight the business owner suffers mm -hmm. and that's the problem mm -hmm. and don't let's forget just this morning i had the local government coming out to say even the state are not entitled to collect that tax that is meant for the local government i hope very soon we won't hear <laughs> even the community requesting that they want to be part of it <laughs> <laughs> how would you weigh in especially the last point that uh, she has not made in there uh, about look it's going to be the small business owner in the first instance that's really going to be um, suffering for this definitely definitely uh, it was just to portray what he said if you look at the judgment also the judgment also uh, i'm not a lawyer like you said, uh, mm. but it was very clear i think we have in the constitution we only have the exclusive right as far as bad is consigned whereby government and 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 the uh, we only have profit capital gains and um, profit and capital gain, gain tax. And, yeah, imp mm. and that's what is there so that's but based the on that doesn't it, 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 the constitution i've been hearing has left the lacuna yeah for the, who you actually yeah should take that should, back, take that. should, should, should take collect that yeah. but and after, if you look at that it's all about consumption it is. Yeah. and when you talk about consumption then you are driving it to the state level yeah so if you look at that judgment you see you see why other states want to join the bag wagon but they should be they they, they should hold it first there's a lot of uh, things involved like business owners some state will say oh, we get more let me give an instance. I'm a business owner. You produce something in Lagos State. You pay VAT to Lagos State. Then you now go take that same product to Oyo State. Where means if the new VAT law comes into play, you also pay VAT again in Oyo State. So we have 37, 37 different VATs. Tax, tax, tax jurisdiction. So it will be cumbersome for the business owner. And it more or less what business owners have been shouting about multiple taxation. Yeah, 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 it will yeah. just come into play. And again, to make... It will, we must look at countries that have tried to do things like this. It didn't work. India tried to do it. It didn't work. Try every state, they have 29 states. 29 states, they say every state should have a station. At the point, they have to come back to the centralize it. And then you, have, you, care, you create a central body to share those tasks. Even currently, Brazil and Canada are among the biggest economy in the world. They are moving towards centralizing their state uh, VAT issue. So we shouldn't just think of going in there now and thinking it's going to favor one state or the other. When we come up with the numbers, you realize that it will shock you that the federal <laughs> government are the one that will benefit more from this judgment uh, if it goes. Actually, the point has been made that, you know, the federal government is sitting pretty in all of this, in that whether it is the way it is, it is only entitled to its 15% anyhow. Uh, whether it goes the way that is being uh, discussed, it's going to be 15% anyhow. So there's a sense in which uh, either way, the federal government is not losing, in case that was a concern. So now that you hear that the federal government is saying that um, it will obey whatever the law is on this whole, whole, whole matter. Yeah, uh, they, they will definitely obey. If you look at the current sharing formula of this, 15 to the federal government, 50 to the state, and 35 to the local government. So federal government have just a little, mm. even though they, they feel that there, there is more complexity in that VAT that we're talking about. Like Motau said, you have input VAT that you get on your purchases. There is an output VAT on the sales that you made. And what we do basically uh, as tax practitioner is that as at the time you're making your remittance to this, uh, the central body of IRS, you look at some of the purchases you have made and you try to claim input VAT to net off you know, some of the output VAT in such a way that you can reach a minimal VAT that you will pay. But if this comes to reality, you discover that you buy something in Lagos, Lagos will tell you, I'm sorry, that's a revenue I've generated for myself. I may not be able to part with that VAT. Mm -hmm. And it's input to you, the business owner. Mm -hmm. And that's why we say, whatever this is going to be, the major player who are the business owner must be given serious consideration as we speak. If so, some companies are already making their move, if it's to go by the state, please, I want us to comply as early as possible. I've asked the question, if this goes for the next six months, and like I always say, our lawyers, I'm always confused about judgment, and that's why I don't want to become a lawyer. A year later, you'll hear that this has been reverted back. Because I've studied the cases in Nigeria, not only in Nigeria, you always see at the, at the high court, you will win. 
when you get to the uh, appeal court, the other party you win. So that's one one. We are now waiting for who will, <laughs> who will take the final <laughs> battle. They, they, and that is part of the business. They, 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 they even go by the by the by the vote of last year, 2020. Then you realize that the federal government will be the biggest winner. They had federal government last year alone, VAT generated from the federal government was 768 billion. We had a total of 1.56 trillion. Then states all combined, consumption states all combined, got 763 billion. So out of this 768 billion, federal government only collect 15%. So by the time you said it's separate, that means 768 billion all will go to the federal government. Hmm. Hmm. You know, let me bring in, uh, I, I did say uh, Dr. Mabinuri. Good morning, Mr. Mabinuri, uh, Chartered Accountant and Financial Analyst. You've been uh, listening to us. Um, uh, if, uh, what, what, what do you think of the idea, since people have taken it up to that point? What do you think of the notion that, look, FIRS has been at it for almost 30 years now. It's built up experience. There is no experience, I would guess, in the state's tax you know, administrations to do as nifty a job as FIRS could do. Uh, so wh what, what is wrong with the idea or the notion of, look, FIRS continue to do what you do best, uh, but now you just know that it's, it's a different ball game, you know, so just shunt you know, the 50% down to me or whatever is the agreed uh, uh, thing, rather than they start to try to learn to get to grips with it, which a lot of people are quite worried about. Uh, good morning once again, Uncle Yuri. Uh, even though I can barely hear you, I, I can still figure out what you said. Um, <clears throat> I think the problem with, uh, that we're having right now is as a result of the lacuna in the Constitution. Uh, before the, before the VAT, the value added tax came into existence in 1993. We've had what they call the six, uh, sales VAT, a case where uh, VAT is paid at the point of sales. But uh, the federal government, the military uh, regime at that, uh, that time, in 1993, felt um, they should uh, centralize the collection of, of, of um, uh, sales tax by introducing what they call value-added tax. So the value-added tax uh, um, uh, was introduced and the sales tax was um, repealed. As, uh, repealed. As I said, sales, sales tax is at the point of sale, the final point of sale. But value-added is multi-stage uh, um, um, ta uh, ta uh, taxes, the uh, tax being collected. That is collected at various Sorry, level Dr. of uh, production. Uh, Dr. Where I'm going to have to come added. in. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to have to come in. The, there's a gremlin in our audio system, so to speak. I, I, so sorry about that. You can't hear me, but uh, stay with us, please. We'll take a quick break. We'll fix it, and we'll be right back. Uh, just to check base uh, with Mr. Mabinori. All right. It's going to be one of those kind of days. I, I think we still need to go back on a break. Hello, sir. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Uh, uh, Mr. Mabinori, I can hear you now. Uh, go Hello, ahead. Sir. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. It's a bit dubious. The sound is a bit dubious, but go ahead, please. Hello, Let's sir. see if it sort of fixes itself. Go ahead. I was asking you the question. I couldn't hear the answer, Hello. fortunately. And even now, there's something of an issue. I was wondering, could the FIRS continue from the studio to administer it and just now disburse it differently from how they used to be? That way, we'd sort of dodge that particular uh, bullet of um, starting from fresh in the States. <laughs> Uh. Okay, uh, you, you, you can't hear us, Dr. Uh, let, let me bring that question back to studio, even though I'm hearing myself in a way I'm not too happy about. But um, look, uh, my proposition to, uh, to Dr. Keep everything the way it is, especially now that federal government is saying that uh, the presidency is saying that President Buhari will respect court verdict on the value added tax. Um, so, in a sort of a way, there, there wouldn't be any problem if we could keep 
this particular status quo. I know that's not the status quo that they were talking about from the legal point of view, but the status quo of let FIRS continue to administer it, but it just has to disburse it differently. Is that going, that, will that be satisfactory? Well, I, I think I'll tilt to that side with you in the sense that uh, uh, a journey, somebody has actually worked for years and somebody trying to pick it up. Mm. Uh, uh, it's not something you should just double to overnight and think you have a su uh, success story. I know individuals might feel, let's start, let's make it work. But how, how do you feel if at the central post you're getting so much? Take, for example, an average of like 250, 300 billion, and all of a sudden you're starting on yourself and you're getting like 80, 100 billion asking that you are in a titan period. Are you not compounding the problem considering the fact that the revenue you're actually sorting for is dwindling and going down? So for me, like I've said in some forum, if we can establish, because as we speak, there's a, there's a problem of the business owner not having the understanding of how the position will go. And that would definitely affect the collection as it is. Pending the time that our learned people, our legal luminary, we agree on the position of what and what should be done. Can we come on a common ground? FIRS, this is what the cost says. But we have not actually put the... I can state categorically. States will tell you that we can muzzle our thing and get this done. But we know with the current thing that we have, it's not something that they will be able to achieve. So let's have come on a common ground with FIRS. This is what the cost has states for now. Pending whether you want to appeal or anything, collect this on our behalf, remit this to us. As a matter of fact, we are going to send our personnel to possibly monitor activities well, to uh, see how it goes. Yeah, but, but, uh, but, but, but Mukta, it, it, FIRS has shown that it doesn't like this at all. Otherwise, there will be no need why, for it why, to appeal. Why will he like it? Uh, a, a, an organization that is making 4% profit mm -hmm. on it. I mean, 4% mm -hmm. of the total profit goes to them. Mm -hmm. So definitely, FRS are fighting for their own survival also. Because if they get 4%. It's just like uh, customer and SIS also got 7%. 7 so when this law comes into play, they also their, their own profit yeah. margin will come. Their revenue, come, their revenue also will come down. So, and if you're saying that want to centralize it, they will now begin to say, okay, we are going to add as consultants to use state government. So, state government may have to pay them more than the 4%. So, it's not, it, we need to look for a win-win situation. Yeah. And I think the win-win situation will only come politically. If the, the federal government knows what they are saying, I'm sure they have contacted, they've gotten their information. If the presidency is so confident to tell you that we are ready, whatever the decision is, we are going to abide by it. Like I said, it's going to favor the federal government. It's going to favor them big time. Uh, others, the local government, the so-called fund that they are fighting for, the state government, whatever they think they will be generating, will become a shocker for them. Let me give you an instant. Mm -hmm. If I make call in Lagos, if somebody make call in Lagos State, I pay my value added tax to Lagos State. If you make call in Cardinal State, your value added tax goes to Lagos State. Because, because the, the headquarters of the telecom, of the company, telecom company is in Lagos State. That is telecom, that is for telecom banking too. Every transaction you do, any part of Nigerians goes to Lagos State. That's why it seems that Lagos State generates 60% of the VAT. That's why I say Lagos State generates 60% of the VAT. But when you start saying, okay, every state should start generating its VAT, like you said, it's going to be cumbersome. I have a telephone line when I'm in Medugun, how do you generate that? Oh, I'm making a call for Medugun, the VAT now goes to uh, Bruno no, no. State. So it's going to be, like you said, businesses are going to be the one that are going to bear the crunch of this matter. So You know, that's on one hand, uh, yes. Uh, but there are other issues that people have been talking about, the, 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 uh, uh, the unfairness of it all, the way they see it. Uh, the most notorious example is that in Lagos, we drink beer. In Kano, you are not allowed to drink beer. There are police on the matter in Kano, uh, generally speaking. Uh, if you are, uh, if you know, uh, maybe there's a place where Muslims can legitimately drink beer in Kano. I don't know, but it, long story short, it is frowned upon. So people have made the very graphic example of we are drinking beer here. Mm. It is haram over there. Why are you now partaking of the proceeds of haram? Uh, now that's on the one hand. Uh, okay, you're really, before you move forward, let me shock you on the other aspect. Okay, that's just one of the several. 
Even in the VAT, are you aware that agricultural produce are exempted from VAT? Indeed, indeed. And majority of these things to come from certain section of the country. Not only agriculture, even education. 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 So by the time you take the agricultural proceeds that is exempted from tax, and you start charging the tax. So you go ahead with your beer. I go ahead with my agricultural <laughs> produce. <laughs> we will be able to stand there. No, they the figure, you know? the figures even from consumption from alcohol is just about 150 billion. You see? It's but just 150 billion. Yes, it's just that it seems to be something it's of so an emotional. Just, it's emotional. It's just uh, 150 uh, billion. Mm -hmm. but, but, consumption but, but, from the southwest alone, in terms of consumption, in terms of other goods, is it's the, the highest. There, don't, there are going to be other complications. Take, take the ports, for instance. Take, take the ports in Lagos. Yeah. Only God knows how that one is no, going no, to No, no, no. That is, uh, see, because that's why the law passed in by the Lagos State House of Assembly now. Yes. If you challenge it, if federal government challenges, it's, it's going to be because import duties are the exclu they are under the exclusive right yeah. list. So Lagos State is passing it that when you bring a car, import duties, everything will be paid to Lagos State. No, they okay. won't get they won't go far with that. I, even if even if they don't, the fact that the, the port is cited in Lagos, uh, it's a national asset. It's a federal asset. If cited in Lagos, but it does have implications and impacts on. Uh, See, it's location. Okay, so the there are those who are saying that, wait a minute, just the infrastructure, the maintenance of the very thing that nobody is arguing, it's federal. But we need to, you know, have the wherewithal to be able to maintain those uh, structures. Look, okay, what I think the state should be doing, look, look, look at it. Import duties, tariff, everything under the exclusive list goes to the federal government. So they should use that to maintain the port. Where I have a challenge which we keep brought out also, is when it comes to projects that have been executed by Lagos State government. Mm -hmm. Lagos State government is giving a contractor a project to do. And the contractor is going to pay value added tax to federal government. That is the area that I think we should begin to look at. Because I'm giving more projects for job in infrastructural development in my state, and my people are not going to benefit from the value added tax. That should be where they should be looking at. And uh, if I may support what uh, he is saying, mm. that is the area where we're saying, let it still be collected centrally, then go back on the drawing table to say, okay, each state, possibly on your portal, we're going to now add which area are we generating this tax from for us to be able to make sure that we give on... Because the boom of contention is, is, that is a the sharing formula. Is that... Okay. But by the way, let, let, let me try and hear again from uh, Dr. Mabinori. Uh, Doctor, hopefully it's, it's well now. You've been following the conversation. Would you like to weigh in on this stage what you think uh, about, about this situation? Thank you once again. Thank you. Is one of the uh, most convenient, which like one of the most convenient um, taxes to collect uh, because um, indirect tax fund is easier to collect than direct taxes. And because it's all, it's all about value input and uh, I mean, VAT input and VAT output and the difference being paid. Uh, fine, there are still some uh, lacuna star tax evasions and tax avoidance are still being practiced by some um, sharp uh, uh, practitioners there. So, but what I would say, because of convenience, I uh, will more or less uh, still suggest that um, FRS will continue collecting the tax, even though... Uh, if, not even I, I know you can't hear me from the last time. I can so hear you, I'm sir. so I sorry, Dr. We're going to have to with you. I can hear it's you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not working. Okay. The echo is coming through. Both your voice and the echo. I, I don't know. Would you like to say another sentence? Let's see if it's working. Okay. Can you hear me now, sir? I, go ahead, please. Okay. So, as I was saying, just for the case of, for the sake of um, our convenience, maybe the federal government should still, uh, FIA should still continue collecting. But if you go by the uh, legality, it is actually a state um, owned um, uh, ta uh, tax. It is the state that should, be, that should collect it because it's, it's replacing sales tax. And sales tax was being collected by uh, state government before 1993. It was until 1993 that VAT was introduced that became federal. And um, I, I've, I've heard what the analysts in the studio have actually said. The complexity of collection will start coming in. How do we draw the... Well, that is just too hard to listen to. Uh, but I'd like to thank uh, 
Dr. Mabini Oriu for you know just staying with us and helping out working it and see if it could be worked. Even as I'm speaking now, there's still something of an issue. Um, it's one of those kind of days. Ah. <laughs> Let me come back to studio. <laughs> now, now you got me thinking about the technical aspects instead of concentrating on my content. Um, and, and I'm sure you have much of this complexity when it comes to VAT itself. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know what's going on today. Maybe I don't know if this raining that's, that happened in Lagos, I don't know if it got into some place. Uh, it could be. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, what you guys are busy t uh, sort of explaining is that, look, it's 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 not a simple one it's no, not as not simple mm -hmm. as perhaps you know uh those who are pursuing it think it might be but it's all about not getting a fair deal uh especially in the impressions of governor wiki for his state and lagos that has to be joined in, in the suit uh, but here you are, Muktala, Muktala said that, well, uh, people need to tread cautiously. They need to tread cautiously. If you look at uh, if we go away with this law, only six states have been able to generate internet generated revenue. And those six states will be saying that there are states that maybe has a little bit uh, good uh, uh, tax um, revenue offices. Hmm. And again, even with that, there's also need, uh, a lot of challenge. You just need to ask the businessman in Lagos State the challenges he goes through getting being exactly. paid tax through to Lagos State and all the time. Look, and if you look at the Lagos State law, it's going to be an upheaval. Yeah, because when, when look I look at, at that law, the federal government is collecting 7%. You say you are collecting 6%. Fine. Federal government said if you do a turnover of about 25 million, mm -hmm. you will not yeah, pay yeah, tax. Yeah, exactly. so Lagos State government said no matter your turnover, you have to pay you tax. You have to pay. So and uh, there, are, there, there, there are two categories I was hearing uh, in, in that regard. Those that are just about to start their business. You start a business, I think you have, uh, what, uh, uh, six, six months or something like that yeah. to, 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 to register. Yeah. Uh, but if, if you are in there already, it's, yeah. it's almost instantaneous. It's, uh, yeah, it's and there are fines that no business in that category can really bear. And so, you see, so when you look at this, um, just, just like he said, the 50,000 in the first instance, and then I think subsequently 100,000 every I mean, month. And this is a small time business. It's, 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 not, it's, it, it's, it's going to be very challenging for businesses because, like we say, when the two elephants fight, the grass suffer. Nobody's looking at the, at, at the grass at the, now. Yeah. Everybody's just talking. Nobody's thinking about how do we help these small businesses grow. Like I said, uh, Uncle Yori, remember on our program, I said, what we are clamoring for is political restructuring. But what Nigeria really needs to be stable is economic restructuring. Mm -hmm. If we get it economically, we won't be having the type of issues that we are having. Lagos says it's feeling that we are, they are collecting more tax, we are paying, giving them more value added tax. Now, like I said, where we should be looking at, how many of these value added tax comes from redevelopment in Lagos State? Or redevelopment in Edo State, redevelopment in Kaduna State, redevelopment in Enugu, Enugu State, redevelopment in, in Bruno State. When those we can begin to say that is where the value added tax could come from. If I'm giving a project to a contractor, I don't see any reason why the contractor should be paying value added tax to the federal government. It should come because it's my project. Those are things that they should look at. And then so the more project you give to the development of your people, the more tax you earn. And and uh, also uh on Kiori, if I may put this to, to what Mutara said, I think the, the, the basis of this argument is trust deficit. The state does not trust the federal government. Now the local government are coming up. They don't trust the state. The state. Government. And I'm very sure the community does not even trust its local government at all. So can we go back to the drawing board? Let's leave the technicality as financial analyst and all those things. Can we fix the area of trust? Can everyone believe that if federal, see, if federal states have the trust in FIRS, there won't be any agitation to say, no, I want to be collecting it myself, when I know that some of the things that you've actually deducted from that has been able to develop a template over years. How do you share the apportionment of the investment that we've had over an average person, you know, for we financial analysts, we go backward again in whatever you're doing. How do you apportion some of the investment that FIRS has actually plowed into technology of getting things right? Who is going to lay hold on the investment of FIRS in collecting those things, you know, administratively? It's, 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 it's deep. 
And that's why for me, let's leave the area of whether you're a financial analyst, you're a chartered analyst. No. The truth is the trust deficit must be, we must come with equity and fairness to everyone in such a way that the state can have confidence that the federal government is actually working in my favor, not sectionalized, not being favoring one part than the other. If that is done, I can assure you, everybody want, will want to ease the burden. You see, so many people, how do consultants survive? They just want to centralize what everybody is doing and say, can you do it for me? At the time, it's not that government does not have the wherewithal. When uh, the issue of uh, single uh, treasury stuff was to come up, they engage the company like Remeter and say, okay, if you have the resources, if you have the technology, do this on our behalf. And if there is trust element there, nobody will be contending or contesting whatever is going. So I feel from the public you know, view to say, let's increase the trust that we have in governance so that the state can trust the federal government. The federal government can go about trusting, you know, the state and know that they have their interest at and, and the masses that we are leading. Have, have, what do you think, uh, Mukta? Haven't we passed that stage? I mean, this whole matter of trust, yeah, it's, it's, it's an ideal case scenario. I don't know at this moment anybody is ready to trust anybody else again. <laughs> trust is, uh, uh, trust. Let, let, let me, sorry, let me bring in Mr. George. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori, and uh, greetings to your guests. Good morning, Mr. George. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Can you hear me? Hello, Uncle Yori. Hello. Oh, oh, okay, um, we, we, we'll get Hello. the speaker on here. Um, Hello. I understand that Mr. George can be heard at home. Uh, the problem is just in the studio. <laughs> can you hear me now? Um, if only there was a floor manager here. Uh, okay, we're, 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 we're trying. Mr. George? Yeah, I can hear you. stuff that you shouldn't be hearing. Uh, okay, go ahead. Try again, Mr. George. <laughs> um, I think we're going to have to give up on anything outside of the studio. So it's up to us guys. You know, that technically speaking, thank God I have, I have here Mukhtar Mohammed and I have uh, that one is working. Uh, Zoom, anything to do with telephony is, is not working. Now, what was the last point? We, uh, you, you were just about to... Yeah, uh, I was saying that um, we, we, we shouldn't um, begin to look at it the way like uh, a winner take it or we should begin to see how both sides will come to a political uh, uh, decision. Do you think this is a uh, political, it, it has to be sorted out no, politically? No, because talk about trust. Lagos senators for a long time have been agitating for Lagos to be, you know, seen and treated as a special state. Yeah, the special state status, uh, if you look at it, it may not be constitutional, but Lagos is already having the special state status somehow. Like I said, telecom company, banking, all their year, giving yeah, it uh, the all advantage that it everything does they have. say they they put those uh, uh, um, ink, I mean those revenues from those places under Lagos State. That's why Lagos State is generating that. Look at Abuja. Abuja to stand to gain from this. Abuja alone will be collecting about the Abuja fat as per 2020 was 220 20 billion, billion, and they only got 46.6 billion. So you can imagine if Abuja is going to collect 220 billion. So we must look at this thing, regardless. It's not the numbers. It's just like what happened. They, 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 what, what they say happened in the power sector when they saw the numbers from uh, what uh, NEPA was generating and all of them was going, oh, there's so much money there. They didn't know about the technicality of it. By the time they went there, they said, oh, what they showed up was different from what we are seeing now. <laughs> so we should be very careful where we are going. We're actually going to, what I'm going to see, what I want to see the government do is let's come to a political solution on this. The legal side will not work. I know why they don't trust FIRS, um, FIRS because you see, look, for just collecting tax for us, 
we're going to pay you 4%. That's what they are still looking at. But again, if you look at Lagos State, the consultants who are in Lagos State are also collecting something. So we must look at it. And that one is not even the public knowledge how much they are collecting. But we know that federal government is collecting 4%. If consultancy is not viable, nobody will venture into it. And that's why they must look at it from that perspective that FRS is just like a channel who has the, the machinery yeah. in assisting you to collect what is ideal or what is uh, expected to be collected seamlessly. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 my friend that was joining uh, virtually says something about convenience. Where you can, uh, uh, just a few months we heard about some of the uh, uh, things set up by uh, FRS in the area of product, technology, you know, removing the uh, human interface in making uh, payment of your tax. These are some of the investment they have done. So why you, if you feel that the 4% they're taking, you can go back to the drawing board and re renegotiate. Re renegotiate. It's, it's, it's what is expected of them. Look there. at that 4%. You know the entire country is paying them 4%. What Whatever they decide to be taxing each state. Each state, definitely 4%. If, if the state is going to have its own consultant, Uncle Yori bet me some consultants in some state will be collecting 10%, 8%, not that 4%. You know, it's just the it's just so, looking at the numbers. Yeah. So, so as you guys started off, you know, trying to show, it's a complex affair. It's not as, uh, shall I say, simplistic uh, as if Lagos gets its way, if, uh, you know, Rivers gets its way, then things are totally different. But there still is the know-how aspect to the whole There's thing. There's the know-how aspect of the whole thing. Like you said, the technological aspect of the whole thing. It will create room for, you know, businessmen will always take advantage of loopholes. Yeah. It's going to create a lot of room for loopholes. This kind of revenue that they say they are going to be getting, they might not be getting it. They will, it creates a lot of loopholes for businessmen to go, go I mean, get, um, get over it. Like I was saying, in India, the time they said each state was collecting value added tax, they said that the time that truck that is moving from one state to the other will have to be on the road for about four to five hours so that to be able to know how much is his value added tax before they will allow that truck to go into mm -hmm. that state. So you see manpower hours are being are, 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 are lost in those periods. So we need to come back to the drawing board. It's good for Nigeria. We are beginning to say, look, if, if I generate this, I need to have more of it. Fine. But the technicality. So we need it, to sit down and talk. That's one way of looking at it. It's, 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 That's one way of looking it, at it. It's, it's one way of saying, let's come to the common ground. The, nobody is contending that uh, VAT should not be applied. But what do I get from it? Everybody, and it's based on the fact that uh, so many things outside there, and to me, are not in the in the right perspective. Yeah. People, the only thing I've been seeing trending on the social media is about beer, <laughs> destroy beer. That's but I've asked people to go and study VAT on its own. There are things that are exempted from VAT, and when you exempt on it. For an analyst, like or the financial person, you put value to it. What you're doing is that, okay, you're supposed to pay so much on this particular thing, but I'm, ex uh, you know, exempting it for you that's so the that case. there can be convenience. That's the case with agriculture and, uh, you know, medicals, and medicals, and medicals, and hospitals, hospital, you know? pharmaceutical. Mm. Yeah. As soon as some of those things, take for example, goes to the East, they are the one in charge of pharmaceutical things, and you need to pay so much. In terms of health, the agricultural, you have to pay so much for those. You discover that the complexity of it, you that you feel that you have that money at the beginning might be losing on the long run. Even the ease of doing business, the ease of doing business that we are beginning, beginning to celebrate, we also have a, a, a big challenge there in the ease of doing business. And also, like he said, the, the complicity in terms of I will remit tax here, every state I have my product, have a different tax law to govern me, it's going to be very complicated. And, and what happened by the time you start having different tax rates? Then my, my <laughs> Lagos is talking of six. What we have been saying mm. is that mm. Lagos is talking about five. six. Some Another will person will say four percent. Some will say ten. ten. Because it's not going to be how much, how much of those industries are located in my area. Yes. How much of those industries, how much am I going to generate from it? If I have fewer industries, then I will have to raise my tax bill. You, you raise the bar. The bar so that I can generate more for bad. And then the people that are in that place will suffer. They have to pay more for those goods and services. So we need to look at it critically. Let no uh, the, 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 the grass suffer. Let, look, 
The current tax law that was embedded by the government tend to help small businesses to grow. Yeah. They yeah. want to, small businesses to grow, entrepreneur, SMEs, that's income, grow. And in any economy, I keep that saying, if you're SMEs, not turning over 25 million, yeah, you're sort of exempt. But, but, now, but now, some said we tell you that no matter the amount, even there, if it is, even if it's 500,000, you must be in the line tax. of fire. Yeah. So we need to look at that and begin to see. Even the, if, if you look at states, what they, like I said it in your program before, I said, we have gone beyond tax for revenue all over the world. Everybody are doing tax to development. How do we attract people come in here that will give them to pay less in tax, then develop our economy, employ more people, and those people will also pay tax, and they also will pay tax. That is where we are in the world now. But Nigeria, our federal, and even our state government, what we are thinking now is tax to revenue. Nobody is looking towards tax to development. to development. Well, all of this is, you know, well, well and good to know. Uh, but as you know, there are also those who are saying that, look, this is actually kick-starting the um, whole uh, fiscal uh, federalism uh, dream that we've had. Whether by accident or by design, we've arrived there now and that... Um, Whichever way the highest court in the land pronounces, uh, this, this, con this conversation has started. Uh, <laughs> it, it is a welcome development, you know, to me, where we should be able to even challenge, this challenge what we have in our constitution. It's been part of the problem that everyone is just afraid and say, if I take this up, where is it going to end? If you have instances like this where you can challenge and you, you, you get fair judgment, it shows that you, you, judiciary are actually, but my concern all the time, and that's why I always want to engage my learned friends, the baristas that come. Uh, why is it? Is it that people at the high courts study a different law from those at the court of appeal? That when you present a case at the lower court, you tend to hear uh, you, you, you hear somebody winning, and when he gets to appeal, <laughs> he wins. And when we get to the Supreme Court, it becomes dicey for those of us who are not learned enough. Yeah, but, but not always. You know, not always. It, it's you know, not the always that he goes this way. just made a comment. He said he wants to see how cases are being judged based on facts than on technicality. Most of the court's judgment that are favor some people in Nigeria is all based on technicality. So one judge was supposed to sit on that, was not supposed to sit on that panel, decide to sit on that panel. Rather, he was supposed to become a, an appeal court judge. So every judgment that he gave, because he was not qualified to give that judgment, that judgment is not on board. So there, there's those technicality. In, it's not about the evidence, now it's about the technicality. And that is where lawyers strive. Lawyers strive on technicality. <laughs> so well, for me, I feel we can just try and manage that in the sense that, you see, if the final judgment we're getting on this, is what the pronouncement we got from River State High Court. I think it will be much more better. We know, okay, this is done. The business people, I'm so concerned about that because yeah. that is a space I belong to. Yes. So that in the nearest future, you won't be dilly Take, for example, if state said, okay, we have it, and you register with them. Six months later, it becomes the other way around. FRS is winning the case. How do you fill the gap of what the state has collected? Trust and average their revenue generating. It. They will tell you that is not. You have to pay the backlog of some of And that will impact on our businesses. Okay, and that I want a situation where that should be done speedily. Let, let me bring in uh, Kesandu. Good morning, Kesandu. Okay. Thank you very much. Go ahead, please. Yes. Equity and fairness. We must all agree that what the judgment that we had or what uh, Governor Wike is pursuing is the right course. That is just the truth. Because this person, Mr. A, cannot generate 100 billion, for instance, Mr. B will generate 10 billion, and that the whole end of the thing. Uh, uh, you, you, like you, the sound is excellent, but we just needed to go up you a bit. Understand. It started out fine, no. and then it went down to the lowest no. possible. No, no, no. I don't know if that's with Kesandu or if it's internal here. No, no. What we're saying, in essence, is the truth is that we are all agreeing to this two federalism, and this is what actually want to have this competition. You understand? If you have every other state that is actually relying on let us get the bad from this or you for this state and will not come to the one table and everybody will share. And secondly, some people are fighting against all these valuable goods. 
We see some part of the north that has drink alcohol has been destroyed. What if we see benefit of this vast? So somebody somewhere is not telling him or answer the truth. So I think the right thing that should be done, you know, that this whole court uh, uh, issue, then go the, the, the court in Abuja has actually done this job, and they were saying that you could have done this. Why are they even taking this appeal after this jurisdiction of where this case is happening? You understand? So I think the federal government, in their wisdom, should agree with the, 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 the Lagos state and the United States government. It will meet the benefit of the entire country. Every state should take care of this vast. That's what the truth is. It will help oh, Okay. Uh, and you Andrew, every other I, I want to thank you very much. I just hope they can hear you at home because we couldn't uh, in studio here. Uh, you could see my guest straining <laughs> for some reason. It started off at a normal volume yeah. and then the thing went down, 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 I down. Think, and again, people are giving Wiki the, the like if Wiki took the federal government to court to challenge uh, the VAT and I finally judgment gave the Wiki is now the one champion in the case like if he was the one. Mm -hmm. So but politically, that shows <laughs> that our political class too does not do their homework. <laughs> it took a businessman to take FIRS to court. Yes, yeah. it was the governor, it wasn't governor in the first Wiki instance. In the first instance, <laughs> but God, UK he now, latched on to it. Last turn on it, and everybody is. And even Lagos now wants to. That last turn on, on what governor Wiki have done. So <laughs> that shows that our politicians also they are not even looking oh at it. They dear. are not thinking outside of the box. Oh dear. Um, I, I don't know. Um, we, we've, today has been one of those kind of days, technically speaking. But you know, I want to thank my guest, Mukhtar Mohammed and uh, Olusha San Okwade, as well as Mr. Olado Toma Binuri that we tried to connect with remotely. It was that kind of a day, but I still we, we still got you know some value out of it in the mm -hmm. sense that um, we're hearing that um, we need to wait and see how all of this goes. Uh, it might not be as simplistic as a lot of people feel, uh, but uh, one way or the other. The, the, the whole story on uh, fiscal federalism, uh, you could say it's beginning to be, uh, this is, these are the beginnings of yeah, the like rewriting, rewriting of, of, yeah, of yeah. fiscal yeah. Fest fe federalism. The, the, the sharing formula. Indeed. I think the, the Revenue and Mobilization Committee have already been talking about yeah. rejecting Reject the sharing formula. Mm -hmm. So they need to find a way around it. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Pleasure uh, to be here. Indeed. Okay, so that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folari. Bye-bye for now.